welcome to this conversation with the Morning Tea Marketing Misses. What we do is we offer valuable tips to help small business owners and sole traders improve their online presence and communicate more effectively to reach a larger audience. For the month of March, we're discussing different ways to celebrate. And we'll all be sharing each week a different level of expertise around celebration and online presence. Now, we have Narelle Gaddy here, who Narelle is an accredited accessibility uh, auditor. We also have Kate Smith. Kate is a graphic designer and she particularly works with service and experience based businesses. Jan's business is BizConnect Web Design, and they're experts in helping small businesses connect with their customers online. My name is Janine Vosper, and what I do is I help business owners and, le and leaders uh, get their words right, be able to deliver their words so that they stand out as an authority in their field of expertise. And that's what I'm going to be doing is sharing this one on different forms of celebrating your brand. And you know what popped into my head just as we were, as I was reading that through is one of the things is reviews getting reviews that you can and actually putting them out there and sharing them with other people. And when I ask for Google reviews in particular, I always ask for a five-star review. I don't just ask for a review. And I've been told that a five-star is 80% or better. If someone's 80% happy with your services or better, that's a five-star review. But to actually ask for a five-star review, not just a review and that way nobody is confused about what you want and then to ensure that you have the link and send them the link because everyone gets really busy and you've got to keep reminding some people sometimes when they promise they're going to do a review that they that you remind them to please do that again it's really appreciated helps your business helps get the message out there whatever they enjoy if someone is is so busy you're not getting those reviews it's great to send a, a message to them to say hey Kate I know when we work together you mentioned that you just love the level of confidence that you have now and what you speak I'd love to have a review so it really prompts somebody with the right words that they've told you already but they haven't written down and put into a review and to do the same for LinkedIn also is to help people with that information and because a lot of people get very blank I don't know about you does anyone do that get a bit blank when someone says can you write a review and you thinking, oh, what am I going to write? I love what I saw, heard, did, but I'm not sure what to write. So help people out as much as you can, ask for review, and then celebrate them. Yes. Yeah, Put it out there to the world, let people, the world know, hey, I just got this awesome five-star review on Google, and this is what it is, and share it across all of your social media but, so that people know that other people who have worked for you what the benefits they've got out of working with you and, and sharing that that out there if we don't promote ourselves then guess what nobody else is going to do it yeah. we need to have a way of standing out and if people if you're doing a great job doing something and people are telling you that then there's ways for the internet to help promote you because you have great reviews across your social media. Now I use the Google reviews because being in business, I, I have you know focus on that and, and LinkedIn as well. But if you're on Facebook a lot and your business is mostly set up and there, we'll get the reviews on there wherever it works for you. But don't forget to share that information out there. Yeah. Janine, with these reviews, what do you do if you get a not so good review? Do you use it? Do you hide it what do you do i haven't had any of those but <laughs> i understand the question <laughs> no i do understand the question yeah. uh, i've used reviews for you know booking hotels and i think we all do that don't we yeah. we look to a place and we see that there might be and i did this for when we did a lot of travel in europe went through and went there's 30 great reviews and there's one bad review well, guess what? That person was having a bad day or they're fussy or something's yeah. gone wrong. And I would not pay attention to what that person uh, had okay. said. And and that, but you've got to answer every review. That's such an important thing is respond and thank people for their reviews. If it's a if it's a not a not a good one, then go back and ask what the what was about your service or your product that the person didn't like. And is there something that you can do to rectify it? 
But I, the only bad ones I've seen on other people is someone just being awful and they haven't even used a product or service. I've had yeah. complaints from that from people more than once. And eventually you can ask for them to be removed and, and shifted if, that, if that's not a real not a, a real client that you've you've had but yeah. definitely respond yeah. to them that's a good point janine because um you can sometimes see look you, you we need to read between the line as consumers as well but quite often you'll see competitors that will go on to or get their friends to go on to google and put a bad review now how the business owner responds to that google is paying very close attention to because mm. we've actually seen businesses go out of business because of how they've handled a bad review. You know, you don't go and say, well, go and kiss my hiney, go take a leap, right? <laughs> and that's, that's what, what goes on in your mind. Exactly <laughs> right. That's, that, that's your inside voice, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, whereas we've seen businesses who have responded kindly to a bad review, mm. in the end it's been like I was saying, a competitor who got their friend to go and do this bad review. Whereas Google actually, it's not silly, it saw what was behind all of that and actually ranked that higher because of how they handled their oh, answer. That's interesting. It yeah. is very, very interesting. So, you know, Google's not silly, neither are people. So when you see 30 fantastic glowing reviews and you see one that is not a good review, like you said, mm -hmm. either they were having a bad day or it's a yeah. competitor or their friend um, yeah. putting up a bad review. Okay. I actually great, had a client yeah. tell me a story recently. He got a one-star review and he's got an exemplary, like he has, I think, over 100 five-star reviews. So he looked into this and he found the, the name and he looked through his CRM and he keeps very meticulous records about everyone he deals with. And he's like, I've never met this man. So he actually managed to call him and talk to him. And it turns out he has a competitor with a very similar name. And oh. that man had dealt with his competitor and had a bad experience and not this client of mine at all. So oh, after wow. the conversation, he said, oh, I'm so sorry. He went back on, changed the review to a five-star review. And so he, <laughs> in the end, he got a free five-star review out of it. So it's oh, worth wow. chasing these things up even more than perhaps responding to the review is to even talk to that client and say, look, I really want to fix what happened here. Mm. Um, what can we do? That's a, that's a great point, Kate. Just on that. How you find somebody's details if they haven't got a website. I was tracking down some details for some people today um, and they connected on LinkedIn. So that was my first port of call. No phone number, no email on LinkedIn. And then I had to eventually try and track them through the business. It was a, And it was a real estate agent, right? Oh, mm. okay. What, and that's, it's a pet hate of mine. If you're in business... And it's like having a website where you've got no store, no opportunity for people to buy from you, contact you. You've just got something sitting there that's that's worthless. And it's worth worthless space if you're on LinkedIn and you don't have a way for people to interact and contact with you other than just on LinkedIn. So yes, that tracking people down to to find out things it just makes make it easy for people to find you, really. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and yeah. celebrate it when you get a <laughs> I, I had a just a, a story. I had somebody that had said they were going to one of my professional speaking workshops. So I contacted her and rang her just to details. And she said, yes, please, I want you to send me the information through, which I did, emailed it. And then she emailed it to her boss to say, can you pay for this? And which was what she was going to do. And the boss said, no, but what I'll do is I'll run it for 10 of people and we'll get the whole group done. Oh, wow. Following up, following through with things makes a heck of a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. And then that boss, because she didn't know me, asked me for reviews or references. Mm -hmm. But then I was able to pass on some references and some reviews, both videoed and also the, the reference was a, a, a lawyer that I've dealt with a lot with her team. And she came, the lawyer said, yeah, sure. And then she came back to me. She said, she doesn't go with you. She's an idiot, which she said, I sold you big time, which was great. 
But it's, again, it's all of that and recognising those people that are in your fan club and yeah. being able to, you know, utilise that space where you've worked with people, you've worked hard with people and for the ways for them to to express that and be able to celebrate celebrate that. But, yes, part of that story is about following up, by the way, but, and following through. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks, Janine. I, I, look, like, like I keep saying, I keep learning. And, you know, it, it just shows that, you know, just following up. And, it, and it, actually it reminded me that I always said to my kids, a mistake is not a bad thing. A mistake or an error is a reason to learn. And mm. I don't know whether I ever got it through to them. Who knows? Find out if they ever have children. But <laughs> it is. I mean, that's all a mistake is. If something goes wrong, it's just learn from it. Yeah. And celebrate you, what you've learned. Yeah. And if we don't have challenges, then we don't get the opportunity to build resilience. Yeah. That's such an important factor as yep. well. That's yeah, so right. I suppose this, you know, the conversation here is all about making sure you get reviews or testimonials or whatever that looks like for you, video, online, and then sharing them out there. Yeah. yeah. One yeah. saying that I'm very fond of, and that is because I have the powerlifting background, and that is failing forward. So if we do make a mistake or if we miss a lift, whatever, the idea is, yes, we missed that one, but next time we're going to get it. So it's mm. failing forward. And so um, I just, yeah, that, that came up for me when you were just talking about that. So um, mm -hmm. I think that's a good one to, to remember. Yeah, yeah, most, most, most definitely. Mm. All right. Remembering everybody that you are to ask for reviews, get test testimonials, videos, everything that you can do to support the growth of your business. Because if somebody's loved what you've done, there's a very good chance the next person will as well. But if they don't know about it, then they you don't have the opportunity or they don't have the opportunity to find you and work with you. Mm -hmm. And that's another episode of an episode session, whatever it is we call these, <laughs> these conversations. Just fun. I think that. Yeah. <laughs> fun and learning remember to subscribe to the youtube channel morning team marketing this is we would love for you to comment as well as to what your learnings have been out on each of the videos say bye-bye for now bye everyone